DLL injection is a technique that can help you run your own code from your own DLL into a remote process. This can effectively help you bypass any AV or EDR and it's a fun thing to do. So let's dive right into it. Before talking about injection attacks, let's discuss what's a DLL itself. DLL stands for Dynamic Linked Library and all it does is contain code, as the name suggests, library. So there's a bunch of code in various DLLs across the Windows platform and as soon as some process program needs to get the code, it can get it from the shared library instead of repeating each code for each separate process. The way DLL works is by having its own syntax and it's slightly different than the executable syntax. For instance, if you scroll down to the Microsoft documentation, which will be linked below, you can see this piece of code. What it does is it explains the main DLL function, so from where the code starts and what happens depend on how the DLL is being called. During the demo and the attack we're gonna showcase, we're gonna be mainly interested in that case of DLL process attach. Now before actually going on into explaining how the attack works and why it's effective, let's just first create a DLL. During the demo I'm gonna be coding using Visual Studio 2017 ID which is built in the command of VM machine. If you wanna do coding in other kind of ID you are free to go since the code is pretty much the same, but I'm sticking to Visual Studio because now I find it easy. If you want to create a DLL, it can be done with File, New Project, then we need to have installed the C++ runtime, and then you can navigate to Windows Desktop and just click to Dynamic Link Library, which means DLL. Now, just give it a name, I'm gonna call it, let's say, my DLL, and I'm gonna save it into my user repository, source repos, just like that. Click OK, and there it is. Now let's inspect what file we have. We have pch.h, which I believe is a library for Microsoft compilers and Visual Studio compilers, apologize, because when I was doing DLLs with DevC++ ID, I was not seeing that, but never mind. And the only piece of code we have is this DLL main function, as we discussed before. So I need to include windows.h library because we're gonna use a Windows API to call a message box function. This is being done with either message box A or message box W. So in order to use that, I should include windows.h. And now I can use all the Windows API just like that. Now in order to call the message box, I'm gonna do message box A and then just fill in the parameters. For instance, this is gonna be no. Then we have text, which is gonna say, for instance, hi. Then we have another text, which is the caption, let's say my caption. And then we have the type, which is gonna be no again. Usually that is a type of uh, saying error or warning or info and stuff like that, but we don't really need it. So I'm gonna finish my syntax there and we should be all right. With that, I'm gonna specify x64 because who is coding in 32 bit now? And I'm gonna specify the release because I don't want any metadata to be generated. And with that being done, I can just hit Control, Shift, and B, and the project is gonna get compiled automatically. With that being done, in the my directory, we have a compiled DLL. Since we wound up with DLL, let's talk about the injection attack and how we can execute this DLL into a remote process. Now, when it comes to DLL injection attacks, we need to first attach into process. That's because, as I mentioned, the attack is all about executing code from a custom DLL into a remote process. For that case, we need to first attach and open the process. Then we need to allocate the needed memory because obviously the process is not having initially that memory. Then we need to copy the functions we want to execute, aka the DLL, into the process. And then we can execute the code by creating a new thread with that imported functions. Now, this picture is from a blog post that's going to be linked in the description of the video. I highly suggest you guys to go there and get more in details of how this really works. But now let's give it a practical example. Since we already have the DLL, I'm gonna create an executable so we can do the injection from there. But without starting another Visual Studio or another project, the cool thing about it is I can do it here. I can go to my solution, right click, then add, new project, specify console app, and may maybe just type it injector. Run that and just wait a little bit of a second. While that is loading, I must say that the examples you're gonna see are based on the book on the screen right now. I highly recommend the book to anyone who is interested with malware development as it can really teach you a lot. Buy the book, you're gonna be happy about it. Thank me later. So with that being said, I'm just gonna paste a giant piece of code and with that, let's analyze what it does. 
The first code is of course we're gonna start with main since we have all the functions we can discuss but by progressively going through main we can see how it really changes up together. The first thing is checking for our parameters. Now ARGC is the number of arguments we supply from the command line. So for instance I can do inject to exe, that's the first one, second one, third one. In that case that's three. So that's the normal use of the program and if you mistype an argument, miss or add one more, it's gonna return with this message here. Then we have the DLL, which is gonna be a char array, mean string, and then we're gonna copy the DLL from our FGV1, meaning that we're gonna copy the value we space from, from, from here into the DLL variable. Then we're gonna get the, the length of the DLL. And with that, we're going to get a process by name, which is the ARGV2 parameter. So these two functions are doing so the first one, we, we populate the variable with the pattern we specify, and then we specify a process, which is getting found by here. Now, how that function works is if you go to here, it creates a snapshot, which uses this TL help 32 library. It creates a post snapshot and based on recursive search, it was able to get the process name and also if you can open a handle to it because there's a quick, quick catch on that. If you go to task manager, go to details and type SVC host, you can see that there are a lot of SVC host instances. So one of them is for my local user, another is for a local network service, a system integrity and so on. Then there's a chance that you can specify a process, but it can be opened. So if the first process is a system or a service, there's a chance that you might not open the process. So for that, I, I developed a check handle. And what that's supposed to do is to see if you can actually open a process with that. With that being said, it, we return the ID of the process. I know that can be done better, but bear with me. We are, for, we are learning here. Now, since we get the PID of the process, we do a quick check if the PID is zero or not, or no. If that's the case, we're gonna start a new sacrificial process and we're gonna inject our DLL into it. That's been done by calling another function which starts a new process. How does it work? The first lines of the function are parsing the value we specify from the parameters and that's because we have a normal character which is being parsed here, which is a normal string, but we require a, a unicode one. And the normal process operations are mainly using unicode type of characters and that's why we need to parse it here, but that's the syntax. After we parse it, we initialize the process structure, the process information there, we pass the values we need, and we just create a process using the create process API. With that being said, we check the result, and if the process is being spawned, we return the ID, or if it's not being spawned, we return an error saying something went wrong. Now let's get, get back to the main function, which is there, and after the process is being spawned, we can do loading module so we we get a handle to kernel that is to dll we find the load library a because we need this library into execute and load the dll that we need now for that case we open a new process and now here we start the main point of the attack we open and attach into a process then we allocate the memory we need and this is going to be with the length of the DLL we have and then we write that memory into the allocated uh, into the allocated one so we populate the memory because usually when you allocate something it's filled with zeros so nothing there and now here we just allocate it we write to it and then we start a new thread with the DLL we have created now what that code is gonna do is as I mentioned you need to specify DLL and a process it's gonna either open a process, create a new one, inject the DLL, and start the function from there. If everything's working nice, I'm gonna compile the code right now. I hope to not contain a single error, and that's the case now. And the good thing about it is that you have all the files into one bucket. So I can CD into here, I can do ls, and here is my injector.exe, and here is my mydll.exe. So I can do injector.exe, I'm seeing that this arrow for the, from the main function, I can do now injector.exe, let's call the DLL path, I'm sure we can do directly the DLL name since we are in the same path, I can do my DLL. And then we can do, for instance, notepad.exe. Now, notepad is not running, so let's see what's going to happen if I do that. We have my caption and hi, meaning that the DLL was successfully executed, 
bits click OK and now the notepad spawned. Now you may ask why the notepad was not executed simultaneously and that's because we broke the thread since we spawned only one. Since the thread is being generated and that's occupied by the DLL code, as soon as the DLL code finishes, the notepad continues or the program we specify as it is before. Now let's test the code if we have already spawned process. For that case, I'm gonna use SVC host because we saw that there are many instances of that and I wanna showcase how the attachment checker works. So I can do injector.exe, I can do my DLL here and then SVC host.exe. Run that and as you can see, we have a lot of failed handle attempts. So could not obtain handle on that, on that, on that PID and so on, but we have handle here. But I'm not sure why we didn't get a callback or a message box pop up. If you guys know, make sure to fix the code up. That code is going to be uploaded into Offensive C++. So you can fork it and update it so it works. I would highly appreciate that. We can try another process. So con host.exe. Again, we get a handle, but not really a message box there. I'm not sure really why. We can try specifying the full path here, which is going to be C, users, LSX, source, repos, and my DLL. All right, and that. Oh, there we are. So we need to specify the full path. When learning something in cybersecurity, I am a big fan of actually going there and doing the thing you want to learn. Because if you only watch a video, read a book, or think about something, you can't really magically do it. And especially if the, in the environment is slightly different than what you expect on the video, the chances are that you might fail on that. So what I suggest you guys do is to fire up your Visual Studio, install a C++ runtime if you don't already have it, and try the code, see how it works how to make it better and that's in a nutshell how the community is getting stronger. I appreciate your time and see you right in the next one.